everybody. This is Michael McGalley and Ashish Prashad from Banner University Medical Center, Phoenix. Today, I'll be presenting a step-by-step -step approach on how to perform IVAS-guided PCI with co-registration. And today, we will be talking about the co-registration using the SYNC vision system, which is a Philips system that uses the Volcano Eagle Eye Solid State IVIS that is used mostly in most of the labs in the United States with a manual pullback. The SYNC vision system, it helps co-registration of the location of IVIS image to the angiogram, which helps assess your stent size and length using only the manual pullback, not necessarily the automated pullback. So a quick uh, look at the ultimate trial that compared IVIS versus angiography in uh, performing PCIs and a huge difference in the target lesion failure in favor of IVIS. So if the question is, should we do it or not? Obviously this study uh, shows that IVIS optimization is necessary for good outcomes for our patients. So our patient here is a 68-year-old gentleman. He's a candidate for liver and kidney transplantation. Therefore, he was referred for angiogram. And in his angiogram, he had multivessel CAD. So initially, he was treated with PCI to LAD and circumflex, and he was staged for PCI of the RCA one month later. So this is the angiogram of the right coronary artery that showed severe calcification and distinct severe lesions in the mid-segment of the RCA. So we decided to use an upfront atherectomy given his severe calcification. So we used a run-through guide wire wired the lesion, used a Corsair microcatheter to exchange the run-through for a rotor floppy wire. We then performed rotational atherectomy using the Rota Pro 1.5 millimeter per and ballooned the lesion with a 2.5 millimeter balloon afterwards to allow IVAS to go in. So these are the steps to perform uh, IVAS co-registration using the Volcano system. Number one, we will now make sure that the coronary arteries are well dilated, and we can do that with intracoronary nitroglycerin if it is not contraindicated. Number two is that we want to change the fluoroscopy settings to at least 15 frames per second or higher. In our lab, we prefer 30 frames per second for this procedure. Then step number three, is that we want to ensure that the angiography image includes the catheter tip and the whole length of the vessel. So in order to do that, we recommend using an epicranial view for the LED, epicaudal view for the CERC or OM, and an LAO with a tinge cranial for the RCA. Step number four, is to step on fluoroscopy pedal and press record on the IVIS. And this has starts the registration in the system. Step number five is extremely important, which is slowly pulling back the IVIS into the guide at one millimeter per second. We need at least seven seconds of IVIS and fluoroscopy simultaneously to be recorded in order for registration to be successful. Once the IVIS in the guide, we can press stop on the IVIS and come off fluoroscopy. Step number six is to perform a good CINE angiogram and fill the target vessel completely. After that, the software will automatically generate the co-registration. And these are the images that will be generated by the system after we perform the co-registration and from which we decide the distal reference measurement where we will land the stent. And here our measurements with 3.1 and 3.6 millimeters. 
and our approximate reference measurement was approximately 4.5 and 4.3 millimeters. And the next step is the length measurement, which is the distance between our distal and proximal reference measurement, and the system automatically measures that, and it was measured at 38.8 millimeters. So a few words about sizing of the stents based on IVIS. There are multiple methods by which we can do that. Uh, starting from the most conservative or the traditional method using the distal lumen diameter as the stent size and then using multiple balloons to post dilate proximally up to the most aggressive one which is using the media to media measurement to the size of the lesion. We decided to use a method that is in the middle and used a 4.0 by 40 or Cyrus stent to stand the uh, whole lesion. We then wanted to assess our results by IVAS to ensure adequate stent opposition. There are multiple methods to uh, be able to assess that, and some of them use, for example, an MLA of more than 90% of the distal reference human area to ensure uh, adequate opposition. Some of them use an MLA of exactly the same as distal reference human area. Some of them use the mean uh, proximal and distal reference human areas and use 80% of those as the cutoff. For example, in the ultimate trial, their criteria included an MLA of more than five millimeters squared or 90% or higher of the distal reference human area. Other criteria to ensure adequate uh, stenting is the absence of edge dissection and that plaque burden five millimeters proximal or distal to the stent should be less than 50%. Both these criteria were um, fulfilled in our case. However, when we performed IVIS, our post IVIS assessment showed an MLA of 7.1 millimeters squared. So this is higher than five millimeters squared, but it does not fulfill other criteria. This is a table that we use locally in our lab that shows that if we use a 4.0 millimeter balloon to achieve 70% of the area of that optimization balloon, we need an area of 8.8 .8 millimeters squared. So our IVIS shows that our stent was underexpanded. This is another table by the AVU study that shows if you use a 4.0 millimeter balloon, we need to achieve an area of 10 millimeters squared. Therefore, we performed aggressive post dilation. We used a 4.5 NC balloon, dilated proximally. and we achieved uh, good angiographic results. And optimally, you want to perform IVIS after you post dilate, but we felt that we performed aggressive post dilation and had good angiographic results, and we did not perform IVIS afterwards. So a few take home points from this case. Number one, when we have severe calcification, upfront atherectomy might be the way to go. Number two, IVIS co-registration is a very helpful tool, easy to perform, and it can help determine the size and the length of the stent with a high degree of certainty. Number three, using IVIS post-stenting is crucial for stent optimization, and it can identify stent under expansion that would not be identified otherwise by angiography. Thank you so much.